When you picture a growing city, you probably think of undeveloped land being turned into lots for new homes and businesses. A growing population does need space to live, but it also needs space to bury its dead. In St. Paul's early days, acquiring land for a public cemetery was a big issue. In 1853, civic leaders responded to demands for a large permanent cemetery by purchasing 40 acres of land about two miles north of town. The rolling hills and oak trees inspired the name Oakland Cemetery. The site was chosen for its quiet rural setting. At the time, no one could imagine that in just a few decades it would be completely swallowed up by the city. In spite of this, the cemetery has retained its peaceful, park-like character through the years. When Oakland first opened, a burial lot sold for $3.15, which included maintenance. Since the Cemetery Association guaranteed perpetual care for every grave, fundraising efforts have been made throughout the years, including renting out some of the unoccupied ground as sheep pasture and selling flowers from the cemetery's own greenhouses. In spite of these enterprises, additional donations from the public have always been needed. Among the first presidents of the Oakland Cemetery Board of Trustees were two former governors of Minnesota, Alexander Ramsey and Henry H. Sibley. They are now buried at Oakland, along with four other governors of Minnesota and numerous other dignitaries. One of Sibley's priorities when he began his term in 1869 was to improve access to the cemetery, which was along roads that were often muddy and treacherous. He persuaded the city to build a bridge on Rice Street over Trout Brook, a ravine that is now filled with railroad tracks. The cemetery's entrance was originally on Front Avenue and Sylvan Street, two blocks east of Rice Street. The current southern entrance opened in 1875, after Jackson Street was finished. During road grading, a number of unidentified bodies were uncovered in an old graveyard. The remains were reburied at Oakland. At that time, it was not unusual for road construction workers to come across unmarked graves while digging. Before public cemeteries became common, most burials took place on private land or in small churchyards. Often, the graves were unmarked. In the 1870s, renowned landscape architect Horace Cleveland laid out the design of the roadways and landscaping that is essentially unchanged today. Oakland eventually merged with two adjoining church cemeteries, Zion Lutheran and Christ Episcopal, and purchased additional land, bringing the property to its current size of 100 acres. Today, more than 48,000 persons are buried here. A map available from the cemetery office gives visitors a self-guided tour, pointing out many of Oakland's significant monuments and historical features. Young or old, rich or poor, from many cultures, each grave tells a piece of the ongoing story of St. Paul.